Hello, 9th standard, CBC children. Have a good day. Have a nice day. I hope you are doing well. Today, we are going to do the same ch topic, chapter 7, Diversity in Organisms, part 4, as video number 19A. Right? This video number 19A, continuation we are going to do and you please understand in the board i have written as video 19 that it is to ignore this is video number 19a we'll continue the lesson hello cbc children nine standard have a nice day have a good day i hope you are doing well and you are Gone through the videos so far for chapter 7 diversity in living organisms. Now, also, I am continuing the same chapter 7 diversity in living organism as video number 19 and part 4. Okay, in part 1, we learned introduction and five kingdom concept, part 2 as <coughs> plant kingdom details part 3 criteria for classifying animals as kingdom animalia and now we are going to see the salient features of animal kingdom of invertebrates and vertebrates i hope you can recollect those points so far completed Shall you? now first invertebrate phylum Porifera, Amberga, Phylum, Porifera, Invertebrate, Phylum, Porifera, and along the room for Invertebrate, Phylum, Porifera, they are Invertebrate, absence of backbone, they are unicellular, very exceptionally multicellular, I think, so I am not sure with that example. And then uh, they have pore bearing uh, structures, and those pores pores are opening exterior to the through the opening called spicules or uh, osculum, shamala, and the mallory structure it is. And the whole body they are like provided with the numerous spicules so that they are in contact with the exterior and it is mostly marine form almost all of them are aqua showing aquatic habitat marine form okay so that is for uh, <coughs> phyla porifera or what is given in our textbook it is as phyla porifera <coughs> the word means organism with the holes another poor bearing chalo these are non motile animals attached to some solid support. They are holes or there are holes or pores all over the body. These, leads, these lead to canal system that helps in circulating water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen because it is marine water forms. <coughs> These animals are covered with a hard outside layer of skeleton. The body design involves <coughs> very minimal differentiation and division into tissues. And they are commonly called sponges. <coughs> they are marine habitat. Example, Cycon, Porifera and Euplectelia. Cycon, Porifera, Euplectelia. Cycon, Porifera, Euplectelia. Chale? Example for sponges. Right? The next one, Phylum Cilentrata. Phylum Cilentrata. They have <coughs> Phylum Cilentrata. They are characterized by radial symmetry. Characterized by Radial symmetry and diploblastic. They are showing radial symmetry and diploblastic. Diploblastic, I am sure you can 
presence of outer ectoderm and the inner ectoderm. Middle mesoderm is absent. Instead, they are represented by non-cellular mesoglia. Non-cellular mesoglia. Hence, they are called diploblastic animal. And they are characterized by the presence of cylindron or gastrovascular cavity. Cylindron or gastrovascular cavity. Okay. And they have a special structure called nematocyst on the tentacular region. So that the tentacle when they catch the prey, it has to secrete a poisonous substance to get the prey. To catch hold of the prey, it secretes. So that is called nematocyst. Right? So we say radial or diploblastic animal. Diploblast, presence of non-cellular mesoglia and cylindron or gastrovascular cavity and presence of nematocyst. Go through this. Hmm. So, <coughs> this uh, phylum cylindrator characterized by radial symmetry and diploblastic animal and uh, body cavity is called gastrovascular cavity or cylindra and uh, presence of nematocyst. It is the characteristic feature of phylum cylindrator. <coughs> Example. Example as Hydra, example Hydra, sea anemone, Hydra, sea anemone, and jellyfish. <coughs> Hydra, sea anemone, and jellyfish. Need a particular the examples and the pictures or figure, whatever is available, that will run on the video that you will see. Okay. The next phylum platyhelminthes. Phylum platyhelminthes. They are again bilateral. They are bilateral, triploblastic. They are bilateral and triploblastic and pseudo -celumate. Sorry, they are a celumate animal. Uh, triploblastic and acelomic animal and it is bilateral triploblastic acelomic animal and body is segmented in platyhelminthes body is segmented or unsegmented segmented example tape of <coughs> segmented Example, take home. Unsegmented, example, ring of load. Right? And all of them are mostly, they are parasitic form. They are parasitic form. And then in take home, the uh, segments, they are called proglatid. The segments are called proglatid. In the phylum platyhelminthes. In tapeworm, the segments are called proglatid. And then they reproduce both by asexual and sexual method of reproduction. So, phylum platyhelminthes, enulangulla, triploblastic, bilateral, acelomic, segmented and unsegmented, and they are parasitic form. So, yeah. The next one, phylum ascelmentus. Phylum ascelmentus. As again, para, bilateral, triploblastic, and it is pseudo -celumate. It is pseudo -celumate. Absence of celum. Actually, celum is not, but the cells are. Not true in nature. They are false cells filled with the mesenchymal cells. False tissue mesenchymal cells. Okay. So, platyhelminthes, 
body of animal in this group is far more complexly designed than in other two groups so far we have studied bilateral and then there are three layers triploblastic and then there is a uh, true body cavity no true body cavity acylomy and body is flattened dorsiventrally that is uh, flat top to bottom body is flattened and flat worms okay and then they are either free living or parasitic some example planarian or parasitic as liver fluke and tapeworm free living with the planaria planaria everything above the reproduction regeneration particular another example planaria right the next one phylum as helminthes or nematoda being the they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and the body is cylindrical unsegmented and it is mostly parasitic form causing diseases and the elephant diasis is caused by the uh, as helmet as filarial worm so intestinal worm round worm and pin worm so the coin is like pucci or the children are white la pucci round worm and pin worms i hope you understand this huh? so that is the phylum uh, annelida are you clear shall i read this hmm? Phylum Annelida, fifth one. Phylum Annelida. Here are the. Again, it is same. All the journal. All the bilateral, triple plastic, and U C L M E animal. True C L M E is present. And then they are segmented. Annelids are segmented, and that segmentation. For example, this is earthworm. Example, earthworm. Earthworm, look, this is the mouth region. Right? And then the segment, so body is segmented like this. Right? And this segmentation, here, it is a cylindrical body, it is a segment. After, it is a segment. This is another. The mother is one below the other when they are arranged. That is annulation. That is annulation. Another, hence the name annelida. Ring like annulations are present on the segment, hence the name annelida. Example, at one. So, yeah. Then, this phylum annelida, it shows. Phylum Annelida shows metamerism. Characteristic feature of the phylum metamerism. What is metamerism? As every set of internal organs present in each segment. Every set of internal organs they are present in each segment. Mouth or buccal cavity Dialysis is the is working out. Right? And then uh, excretory organ, nephridium, but then uh, it is present between 6 and 7, 7 and 8, 8 and 9. And by every centric internal organs will be present. And that arrangement is called metamedicine. Okay. So here nephridium, nephridia or the excretory organ and uh, primitive occurrence of digestive system, nervous system and circulatory system will be present. So this organ system present will, uh, will start from this phylum annelida onwards. Otherwise appearance of the organ system commences from this phylum annelida. Sharia. And then here in uh, Anale, the circulatory system, it is of closed type. Closed type of vena that is circulated within the blood vessel. So it is closed type of circulation. 
I hope you could follow this. Uh, so these are the features. And then in uh, pilum annelida at work, animal is hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite na both the hermaphrodite. Both the sex organs, testis and ovary, they are present in the same animal. So it can it shows a sexual reproduction, but uh, male will mature first, male gonad will mature first and then female sex organ. Ovary will be maturing next. So this, this is hermaphrodite organism. I hope you understand this. Huh? These are the features for phylum annelida. So let us this. Hmm? Then phylum arthropoda. Go through panna sengirte. Annelids or the go through panna. Phylum arthropoda. Phylum arthropoda. Arthro means joint. Podana leg. So this is jointed legs. This is jointed legs. Arthropod, they have jointed legs. So yeah. Again, first need to read now. Bilateral. Bilateral triploblastic U sigamate animal. So yeah. And they have presence of jointed legs. And in cactus, there are <coughs> there are three pairs of legs. There are three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings. Locomotory organ, both legs and wings. Three pairs of legs as present in the thoracic region. In cockroach, <coughs> In cockroach, cockroach doesn't. This is prothorax, mesothorax, metathorax. So it is the head portion. This is thorax. This is thorax and this is abdomen. Three region body is divided into three region. It is having outer exoskeleton. It is having outer exoskeleton where the thoracic region divided into three segments. Prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. So in the moon region layer, a pair of legs will be present. And starting from the meso and metathorax, pair of wings are present. So in arthropod, the locomotory organs are jointed legs and wings. Okay. Then you will say the body cavity, it shows it has exoskeleton, chitinous exoskeleton and then the body fluid, it is called hemolymph. Normally, in all uh, other uh, phyla, the blood will be having the red pigment uh, hemoglobin, but in phyla arthropod, hemoglobin is absent. So, they are just it is present with the lymph. So, it is hemocyl, hemolymph, and it is open type of blood circulation. The blood is just bathing in the body cavity and it is white in color absence of hemoglobin right and then the excretory organs in uh, um, what is it in phylum arthropods they are malpigian tubules it is called malpigian tubules Madhusha. Malpigian tubules. Excretory organs are Malpigian tubules, right? And the respiratory organ, it is book lung. Respiratory organ, it is book lung, and with the trachea and spiracles. 
trachea opening outside through spiracles. Namade lower class la parsipon la in fact six channel la parsipon respiratory organs when living things respire and grow the respiratory organ parsipon la and the spiracles present in cockroach. Okay, so here reproduction it exhibits sexual dimorphism as male and female separate okay and the male reproductive system is separate in male cockroach and female reproductive system is separate in female cockroach okay so arthropod probably the largest group of animals these animals are bilaterally symmetrical and segmented there is open circulatory system so the blood does not flow well in flow in the blood vessels. The coelomic cavity is blood filled and then uh, jointed legs example prawn, butterfly, housefly, spider, scorpion and crab. This is for phylum arthropods. Okay. The next phylum in uh, invertebrate like phylum mollusca Phylum mollusca, animals there is bilateral symmetry, coelomic cavity is much reduced, there is little segmentation and they have an open circulatory system and kidney like organ of respiration, excretion and there is a foot called muscular foot to move around and molluscan they show very very slow movements. Example, apple snail and freshwater mussel. Apple snail and freshwater mussel. I hope you understand. Hmm? So this is for phylum mollusca. Then echinodermata, it is spiny skinned echinoderms. Spiny skinned invertebrate. Right? They are exclusively free living marine form. And they are triploblastic with sealum, true sealum, and they have a special water vascular system. And that water vascular system is carried out by water vascular system, it is carried out by a structure called tube feet. Water vascular system carried by a structure called tube feet. Example starfish in starfish production in starfish there is dorsal side ventral side and then on the ventral side we find structure like this these are the tube feet this is tube feet Lab la school tarnata specimen ella arke kaattu vengitthu. Idhu tube feet. Sariya? This is called tube feet. Where it actually moves from one place to other with the help of tube feet. That is called water vascular system. Sariya? So they also have peculiar water driven tube system that they use for moving around. They have hard calcium carbonate structure that they are used as skeleton. Example, starfish and sea urchin. So this is for phylum echinodermata. Echinodermata and that's on a spiny skin. Okay. So these are for characteristic features of phylum Edelam, phylum, porifera, celebrator, platyhelminthus, ashelminthus, it is also known as nematelminthus, analida, arthropoda, mollusca and echinoderm. These are all invertebrates. And then further it is chordata that shows bilateral symmetry, coelomic animals. Further they are classified into Protocordates or prochordate and vertebrate. Prochordates they are further classified into subclass, semi sorry, 
hemichordator, urochordator and cephalochordator. And these rochordates, they are characterized by the presence of notochord, invertebrate absence of notochord. So here in this uh, rochordates, first appearance of vertebral column, or a miniature structure, so it is known as notochord. Okay, so this is notochord. <coughs> That is known as notochord. Right? And the example as for uh, prochordates, these are even bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, true sealer. They show presence of notochord. Notochord is a long rod like structure that runs along the back of the animal, separating nervous system and the alimentary canal. It provides place for muscles to attach for easy movement. I hope you understand. Hmm? Typical example, balanoglasses, ascidian and amphioxus. Balanoglasses, ascidian and amphioxus. Right? And then phylum vertebrata, they are characterized by Notochord, dorsal, nerve cord, triploblastic, paired gill pouches, and coelomic animals. Okay, so when here, phylum <coughs> vertebrata, pollution paddle, phylum vertebrata, it is as glass pieces, glass pieces, amphibia. Plants, pieces, amphibia, reptilia, reptilia, apes, and mammals. Pieces, amphibia, reptilia, apes, and mammals. Right? First, habitat. First, one habitat. It is aquatic. Habitat, aquatic, amphibious, amphibious, and then terrestrial. And terrestrial. We will end up terrestrial. Okay. We will just continue. So, this exoskeleton here. <coughs> Habitat, class species, aquatic form, amphibian, <coughs> amphibious, and then. It exhibits both land, water and land. Moisture is needed to complete its life cycle. And then uh, reptilia, eggs and mammals, they are terrestrial form. And then they have exoskeleton. Exoskeleton are outer covering of the body. Where here they have scales. the moist skin. They have scale, moist skin, reptilia, dry scales, apes when the feathers, mammals when the fur and skin. I hope you understand. Hmm? So, uh, pieces are the placoid scale. Pieces are placoid scales. Those are eating fish on a technical scales are the one. ஒண்ணுக்குள்ளாட்டர்ட் <laughs> So it is having a normal skin. When it is adult, it is having moist skin. Whereas reptilia, it is dry scales. Example, snake, lizard, color tissue, or garden lizard, one are having dry horny scales. Dry horny scales. And here is another example, feathers, where birds, they have 
four limbs modified into feathers. Okay. And then next one the mammals, the whole body, it is provided with the fur and the higher animals go down the path in the fur in the skin and the art of the glove on the art of the glove was even the chara chara yard me other than fur otherwise normal skin. So this is exoskeleton. The next one it is respiration. Respiration here respiratory organ it is gills in amphibian it is gills uh, skin gill skin and lungs in tadpole form it is gill respiration in tadpole form it is gill respiration and uh, skin under moist skin cutaneous respiration and uh, lungs for adult frog. When the frog is in land, it is lungs. Right? Whereas reptilia, again it is lungs. It is lungs. It is lungs. This is respiration. Okay. Whereas circulation, otherwise heart, chambers of heart, chambers of heart, it is two chambered heart, three chambered heart, four chambered, four chambered, four chambered. Same time, this two chambered heart, this is two auricles, sorry, one auricle and one ventricle. One ventricle. One auricle and one ventricle. Whereas in amphibian, two auricles and one ventricle. Three chambered heart now. Two atria, auricle is also known as atria. So two atria and one ventricle. Whereas here in reptiles and uh, apes, it is uh, reptiles learn the two atria and two ventricle, but they are incompletely divided. Whereas in uh, apes, there are two atria and two ventricle. Mammals learn well defined a heart structure. Two atrium and two ventricles. Okay. And in uh, lungs of apes, it is characterized by the aerial mode of life. So for aerial mode of life, it is having the lungs also adapted in such a way that they have air sacs. And they have air sacs on the lungs. And in bones are having Lightweight. They are called pneumatic bones. Lightweighted bones in apes, they are known as pneumatic bones. Okay. So here, this is for heart respiration. So we will say excretion. 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 It is by a pair of kidney. Here also kidney, kidney, kidney. Whereas in mammals, Rather, the excretory product, sweat. Sweat is also a type of excretory elimination, eliminatory product. Okay. So, sweat is another eliminatory product. And reproduction, all of them will show sexual reproduction. All the five classes show a sexual reproduction. I hope you are able to follow this. Hmm? So here, first class pieces, they are fish, they are exclusively water living animal, their skin is covered with scales and plates, they obtain oxygen dissolved in water by using gills, body is streamlined and muscular tail is used for movement and they are cold blooded and their heart have two chambers. They lay eggs, oviparous external fertilization. I am going to tell you again. Oviparous external fertilization. And uh, some with the skeleton entirely of cartilage, such as shark, others with the bone and cartilage. I hope you understand. Hmm? So, here <coughs> that is for fish. 
Then class amphibia. These animals differ from fish in the lack of scales having mucus gland in the skin. Another moist skin. And three chambered heart. Respiration gills in the tadpole form and the lungs on the lateral shell form. They lay eggs again, external fertilization. In the other can in the external fertilization. 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 External. In the external. In the aquatic form, it will do external fertilization. In the internal fertilization. So, yeah, so external fertilization. Example, frog, toad, salamanders. Example for amphibian, frog, toad and salamanders. Right? Then class bacteria, cold-blooded, have scales. Scales on the dry horny uh, scale and respiration through the lungs. Three chambered heart and crocodile will have four chambered heart. Actually, you have three chambered children, but it is incompletely divided four chambered heart. And in crocodile alone, it is four chambered heart. Crocodile love four chambered heart. And then they lay eggs with a tough covering and do not need to lay eggs in water. They are oviparous, but they lay eggs in land. And snake, turtle, lizard, and crocodile are examples of reptilia. Common example is the garden lizard. Next, class apes. Warm blended have four chambered. They lay eggs out of covering feathers. Four lip modified into feathers. And uh, they bear uh, bones are light in weight. So it is pneumatic bones. They are called pneumatic bones. And the lungs have air sacs. That is characteristic of the class apes. So yeah. So, example, all the birds. Then, mammals, they are warm-blooded animal with four-chambered heart and they are characterized by the presence of mammary gland in female and in male it is present, mammae chalva. Mammae is present in male but it is a vestigial organ. What is vestigial organ? An organ which is present in a body, in an animal, but it's a functionless. That is called vestigial organ. So, yeah. And uh, they produce young one, so viviparous. In the oviparous animal, it is the viviparous. Mammals alone, viviparous animal. So, yeah. Except uh, egg laying, a mammal is the platypus. Okay, platypus on the egg laying mammal. So these are all oviparous. Other three, it is oviparous. Oviparous, you know oviparous, you know oviparous, you know oviparous, you know on the viviparous. Viviparous animals which give birth to M1, they are called. Oviparous animals. I hope you understand. Hmm? So here, uh, platypus and ignida, animal name called ignida and platypus, they are egg laying mammals. All others are uh, oviparous animals, another one, viviparous animal. So, yeah. so these are the characteristic features of. Phylum vertebrata coming under cardiac. Are you clear? Hmm? Uh, go through uh, For a second, go through Can you 
Understand? Hmm? The next one, just understand this as uh, classification. We are talking about layer. Yeah. As uh, one more. Good. Here is given as uh, class pieces. Amphibia, reptile, apes. In that habitat on the pieces, aquatic. Habitat on the aquatic. The channel is in your can. First, you should say about habitat, skin cover, and the exoskeleton, and skeleton. Exoskeleton. Exoskeleton. Escape, exoskeleton, exoskeleton, and then nature of respiratory organ as respiratory organ, and then chamber of heart reproduction and excretion of electrolytes, reproduction and excretion electrolytes. The comparative study Nama Bukla Ilai Anna Wanaka Tendyakana. I hope you understand. Hmm? So then, then the largest group of animals is Phyla Arthropoda. They are <coughs> characterized by the presence of jointed leg, bilaterally segmented, open circulatory system. Mm -hmm. Are you clear? Hmm? And then <coughs> Butterfly assigned this given animal to read phylum and what are the characteristics. Now, what have we to write? We will write butterfly belongs to phylum arthropoda due to the presence of the following characters. In the lunch, jointed legs, pair of wings, hmm. <coughs> bilateral symmetry, presence of coelom. And appear, sorry, presence of spiracles. And then you have to say. I, I hope you understand. Hmm? Then what is the function of notochord? No, notochord provides space for muscles, darkness for the ease of movement. Notochord, they attach, they provide space for muscles, darkness, ease of movement. Ease of movement. Okay. Then characters of chordates have a notochord, dorsal nerve cord, triploblastic animal, pad gill pouches, and they are coelomic animals. I hope you understand. Hmm? There is a question why do we keep both snake and turtle in the same class? Because both of them are cold blooded and they have scales breathing through lungs and three chambered heart and they do not lay eggs in water. They don't lay eggs in water. So animals we understand we come across two terms, poikilotherm and homeotherm, animals which have Fluctuation in their body temperature, mostly aquatic form, they are called uh, poikilothermic animal, animals which have constant body temperature like that of uh, mammals, they are called homeothermic animals. I hope you are able to follow this. So these are the characters for phylum vertebrata. I hope you are able to follow this. Huh? In the table as is not given in your textbook. So, you can pass panne, go through panne, understand panne ko. as usual. Whatever you are not able to follow, make a note. We will clarify in the clearing session. Right? So, we will continue in the next video session. Thank you.